Hello everyone, I'm back in the $4 sweater, which as you know, means it's time to talk about Bandai Namco being awful. I haven't made one of these videos in a short while, not because Bandai Namco haven't been awful, I've just been taking a short break from the game, I've been working a lot, but I also feel like a lot of great content creators are now picking up the slack in terms of calling out this very questionable behavior from Bandai Namco. Um, and I feel I can relax a little bit more about it. Great channels like Mike Hollow, who you should definitely check out on YouTube, by the way. And Mike, if you are still interested in making something together, I'm up for it. I just lost your Discord name and I'm sorry, but get in touch and we'll make it happen at some point. But today I have to jump back in because a new change has happened to the game that I find very interesting in some pretty subtle ways. So uh, let's break it down, right? Um, the last few days, Tekken players have noticed that the matchmaking in Tekken 8 feels very different to before, and it's happened all of a sudden. It takes a lot longer to get matches, and they tend to be matched up against the same small pool of people over and over. Um, so what gives, right? Well, it didn't take uh, people long to figure it out. It seems that, that before, the game would just look at the rank bracket that you selected when you went into matchmaking. So, for example, two ranks above and two ranks below, and then it finds somebody in that range with a decent connection, it matches you together and you have a match. But now, all of a sudden, the game seems to be prioritizing above rank um, or at least alongside with it, this number known as Tekken Prowess. So it's trying to match you with people who have similar prowess now. And that raises a bunch of questions. First of all, uh, what is prowess and how does that work? Why would you want to make this change if you are Bandai Namco? But by far the most important thing, the most important question, what you should really notice about this, and the reason I'm talking about it is, it's a, a major change that Bandai Namco have made to the game without telling anybody. They slid this update in, they didn't announce it, they didn't describe it, they didn't inform us at all, which hasn't really happened before in this way, uh, at least as far as I can remember. Bandai Namco don't want us to notice this, which means that it's very, very important. If they are trying to hide something about the game from us, that means that we need to shine a spotlight on it and be very aware. It means it's important, right? I think it might be because the relationship between the player base and the publisher is so sour right now that anything they can do to cause further potential backlash is just something that they want to avoid. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about why this is a really bad change, right? So another one of those questions, let's get back to it. What is Tekken Prowess? Because you might not know. Sometimes in the game, it is incorrectly referred to as Tekken Power. You know, Namco have a lot of issues with, with faults in their UI in this game. But I've made a video in the past. You can go back and look at it if you want to. Um, talking about Tekken Prowess when it was implemented in Tekken 7. My issue with it uh, basically being that nobody understands how it works and nobody understands what it's for. It just seems to be a very superficial and pointless number and trying to understand its you know, mechanics is almost pointless. Um, but we know for a fact that your prowess will go up with the highest rank that you have on any character. It will also go up, or at least it did in 7, um, if you have multiple characters that you're ranking up. So your max rank matters, but how many other characters you have at different ranks is also taken into account. And that is definitely the case in Tekken 8 as well. It also used to look, and I think it still does, looks at your um, player stats. So these things that you have like an S plus for Agreshibu and like a, a C for, I don't know, tenacity or whatever. These random words, we don't know what the words refer to, uh, and what they reflect. We don't know how they're weighed in terms of building up the Tekken prowess. And as far as I can tell in Tekken 8, everybody just has an S plus for everything. So I don't know how this could matter and be an indicator of how good you are at all. But as you can tell, prowess is just this big uh, sort of weird black box. We don't know how it works. We don't know the mechanics. And I think it's just something that, you know, Bandai Namco like in to slap on the, the UI for inexperienced and casual people who might just, you know, look at it and take it at face value. Um, so 
the game is now looking at your Tekken prowess to figure out who you should be matched up against. So what implications does that have? Well, say for example that you are a character specialist, you play one character that you love and you don't play other characters. There are a lot of players like that out there, you know, who love Xiaoyu and they've played her since Tekken 2, right? And they're not interested in playing anything else, but they are world class with that character. Well, they are going to have lower, much lower Tekken prowess than somebody who has a main character and then like two alts that they also play and rank up, you know, for example, somebody like me because I play Elisa for my main and then I play Zafina and now I play a bit of Jack and I'm also like interested in Shaheen and you know, I'm, I like playing different characters. Um, so what this is doing for your matchmaking now is that the game is actually incentivizing you to not play multiple characters and only play one because if you are at Fujin rank and you have low tech and prowess, you will consistently be matched up against the weakest players who are around that rank, um, who have the lowest prowess. Whereas if you are at Fujin, but you have four characters at Fujin because you love them equally, you will now have much, much ha higher prowess. And on average, your opposition, the, the opponents that you have to play against will be much, much more skilled. And there really can be a huge gap and a huge disparity in player ability roughly around the same ranks, you know? I'm at Tekken God now, which means that I have two ranks left to mix to, to max rank. So I'm matching up against those people. But people who are getting max rank for the first time now um, are very, very different from, you know, the players who were able to do it within the first week of this game coming out. So, you know, there can be huge disparity. And if you want an easy time winning now, Namco are basically telling you that you should only play one character. Uh, and this weird number that we don't understand the inner workings of is having this huge influence on our experience when we play the game. Obviously, it also means that when you get to a really high rank, it's difficult to find matches. You do a lot more waiting and you tend to match up against the same people over and over because, you know, there's an additional qualifier. Are they, you know, around your rank and do they have similar Tekken prowess? I think your rank is probably a much more accurate reflection of skill when you play as many uh, different players as possible around your rank because you are sort of distinguishing yourself from the herd from this giant group of people you're able to defeat a majority of them and that's why you should be able to advance right whereas you might be matching up against somebody over and over again who not only is playing who are wrong which is basically torture uh, but you really do, just don't enjoy playing against them. You know, you don't want to play against them again, but now you're being forced to, right? So it has all these implications for what your ranked experience is going to be like. And we have these different threads on Reddit, you know, discussing this and how they don't like it. Now, um, obviously you could use Tekken Prowess as the indic in indicator of how good you are in the game and who you should be matched up against, but... Um, what is the point of rank then? You know, if you took away all these superfluous things and you made Tekken Prowess a, a, a very good indicative number of player skill, then it basically just replaces rank. And rank is just this, this flashy icon, as somebody wrote, that shows up but isn't really what you're looking at. So it doesn't really make sense to me to have both of them working in tandem or have both of them on the screen or in the game at all. Um, mostly you should probably try and pick one of them and make it as accurate as possible. But this really weird thing now where Namco is saying don't play multiple characters if you want to win a lot, I mean, it's just a very strange change. Maybe it's just their way of telling you, you know, we told you with the game design who you're supposed to be playing. You're supposed to be playing like Jin. You're supposed to be playing, you know, Dragonov. Don't worry about playing different characters. Just pick the character on the box and be happy, you know. Maybe it's something like that. Who knows? Um, but I've already seen people theorizing that it's time to start prowess crashing yourself. So um, you could go online right now and you could pick all the other characters apart from your main and intentionally take a bunch of L's and rank those characters down, which means that you are inflating all of your opponents and giving them free ranks, which causes more rank inflation, which is a problem in itself. But now that you've deranked all these other characters and you've decreased your Tekken prowess, even though your main character is at the exact same rank it was before, it will now face on average weaker players whenever you go online. So it's not a good change uh, at all, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and the question then becomes, why would Namco choose to make it? I mean, it could just be general incompetence and, and you know, them misunderstanding what this game is and how it is played. 
they make mistakes like that all the time. I think that this is another thing, another thing they're doing in this constant crusade that Namco have been on for well over a decade now, where they're so terrified of anybody who's new or bad or casual at the game being intimidated by it. You know, it's it's it, it's all connected and kind of goes back to this. It really has been the core design philosophy um, in Tekken for, you know, at least as long as Tekken 7 was out, right? because it's supposed to be like cuddly and happy and easy and help you and have all these menus and, and UI options to make you not be intimidated by the game at all. And also throwing you as many free and easy wins as possible without you having to do difficult things, right? We know that that's what they want to do with the game. And it is definitely showing in the, sh the shape of the game and how it, it's being played right now. And we've had these recent controversies with both Ni nee and Arsenal and Ash saying, well, the game isn't even fun, you know, it's very different. And then both both of them very quickly basically flip-flopping and now saying that they uh, are gonna you know keep pushing with the game which makes it I mean really obvious as far as I'm concerned that they've had some phone calls from their sponsors but you know who knows we can only speculate um, but yeah I think that Namco are basically doing this because Eddie was recently released and he's essentially impossible to play against unless you have a lot of practice and knowledge on how that's supposed to be done. I think the jury is still out on whether or not Eddie is still incredibly overpowered when you know how to play against him. Uh, that's a huge issue and another fat Namco L because obviously you can't practice against the character in this game unless you buy it first. So the only way, if you hate Eddie and all you want is a fighting chance at beating Eddie in an online match, your only solution is to buy Eddie for money, even though you don't want to play him, just so you can lab the matchup, which I think is messed up, uh, but there we go. But all of these good players, these high rank players are playing Eddie now, and so they're playing him at lower ranks. And so um, casual players and new players are, you know, they're getting smurfed against and they're getting upset. They're saying, you know, you shouldn't have to play against these veterans just because they picked a new character. And so I think Namco have slid this in, trying to avoid the backlash, trying to have it not be noticed, but alleviating some of the grievances of people who, who feel they're being smurfed against. Here's the thing though, I lost or recreated my uh, Tekken account, I think a total of four or five times because I switched platforms, I switched countries um, during Tekken 7. And every single time that happened, you know, because I, like in season three, for example, when I was max rank, I made a new account. I was back to max rank within two or three days of playing. Uh, and, you know, once you've, you've gotten to that rank one time, you can just do it again. You see people who have like, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100 game win streaks because they're just going through the ranks that they're not at anymore. So the thing is, when you feel like you're being smurfed against by somebody who's much more advanced than you, that is a very temporary problem that is going to go away on its own very soon because those players are going to rank pa up past you and you don't have to worry um, about them anymore. But when you make really, like really dodgy structural changes to the game, uh, to try and, and, and fix something like that, you end up with a bit of a mess on your hands. It's the exact same thing where they like had to fix Devil Jin's Heaven's Gate damage. And so they made universal changes to how wall splats work. And we had the most disastrous patch in the history of this game so far, even though it's only been out like three and a half months, right? So you're trying to fix this little issue and you implement wide, you know, structural changes to the game and it has all of these unforeseen circumstances but you're not in beta anymore this is a live game that people are playing every day and so everything you roll out should probably be rigorously tested and there should be quality assurance going on at your company i mean these articles we read about you know them putting monetization in tekken 8 because they tanked this genshin impact trash rpg that they're trying to sell um Basically, the, the statement that Bandai Namco made to the investors in relation to that was we're going to, you know, prioritize quality assurance and just have high quality product that is rigorously tested now. Well, it's not what you're, show, what you're showing so far. So that's the, the, the change that has been happening. Let me know what you think about it. I've seen some people are happy about it, but I think I've explained in this video why I disagree. Um, and I think the main thing to focus on is the fact that Namco will now try and, and change the game in big ways without telling you. 
Um, and whenever they do that, it's very, very important that we notice because they've done stuff like hid, you know, a microtransaction store from us before, for example, hid a battle pass from us before. When they try and hide and get away with things, you know that some really dodgy stuff is going on and you should not trust Bandai Namco with your money, um, with your time or with your trust. They just have not earned that. They've done the opposite of earn it multiple, I mean, dozens, if not hundreds of times in a row now. And, and they just can't seem to get it right. So it's fascinating. Now, I'm going to get back into playing the game and ranking up my characters uh, within the next few days. Um, it was frustrating me to the point where I needed a bit of a break from it, which is sad because it's only been out for such a short while. But the main thing that I'm looking forward to is this major balance patch that we're going to get after um, Evo Japan, which is in three days. So within a week, we might be looking at a um, rebalanced version of this game, which we really need because the balance is one of its biggest flaws right now. And I also just want to uh, mention this before I end the video. I always say that I think the marketing of the game impacting or changing the shape of the game is, is a huge problem and it's led to basically all the problems that Tekken 7 had, basically all the problems that Tekken 8 had and people always say to me, well you can't prove that the marketing or the sales strategy is impacting the shape of the game. Well the fact that this entire giant money making machine that is the esports scene which is completely separated from sales of the actual game, right? This is another revenue stream that has nothing to do with physical sales of copies of the game. The fact that that exists and they are now choosing to balance or when to balance the game based on what's happening in the offline world means that if you are like me completely uninterested in Tekken tournaments, you find them cringe and you don't want to watch them and you, you probably will never go to one for the rest of your life, you still had to wait three and a half, almost four months for one of the most necessary balance patches in fighting game history uh, because of the offline scene, right? So yeah, how it's being marketed and, and how they're trying to sell it and how they're trying to create these multiple revenue streams with, you know, DLC and special editions and offline is, is really, it's dictating the entire shape of the game. There's basically nothing else that goes into shaping what you get to play in the end. So it's, it's, it's very, very strange and I guess it's just modern gaming. But I wanted to highlight this specifically because of, of them trying to slide it in, which, which is kind of new. Um, I'm going to be streaming later tonight. It might not be Tekken. I bought this new game called Remnant 2, which looks cool. So that sounds interesting. Maybe show up for that. But for now, thank you so much for watching this and I'll see you again very soon.